plenty coming up as always, but we start in Afghanistan, where every day seems to bring news of fresh advances by the Taliban. Events have moved quickly since US forces left the country less than a month ago. Reports now suggest that they are almost in complete control of the key provincial capital of Lashkargar in the southern province of Helmand. Meanwhile, the capital, Kabul, has also been affected. There was a car bomb attack on the home of the defence minister. He was not home at the time. And there have also been other smaller explosions and exchanges of gunfire. So is it only a matter of time before the Taliban are in majority control of the country? A question for the retired US lieutenant colonel and senior fellow and military expert for defence priorities, Daniel L. Davis. Time will tell, and it certainly remains a distinct possibility. But I think what you're going to find is that now that the Afghan people and their government know that their lives depend on what they do next, they don't have the the luxury of having the NATO forces over their shoulder, knowing that they always got their backs. I think that you're going to see a much greater stiffening of resistance than what we've seen so far. Because, look, the, the people still hate the Taliban. They've never changed that. And, and even in the areas where the Taliban have been gaining ground already, there's already reports coming out that, like you expect of them trying to go back to some of the things in the past. And the majority of the country, they're not they're not going to be willing to just passively go back to that. So I think that you're going to see a much greater stiffening of resistance among the Afghan people, whether it's formal uh, Afghan security forces or whether it's some of the informal groupings of former warlords or, or just some new groupings that are forming. That's what I would be watching for and what I expect to happen. But when we look at the situation now, was it not a mistake at this point in time for the U.S. forces to pull out of Afghanistan? Well, no, absolutely not. Uh, The mistake has been that we didn't pull out earlier because we should have pulled out a decade ago and if or or a year ago. And if we waited a year from now or another 20 years from now, it would still be the same because this is a militarily unwinnable situation. You're not going to succeed with military forces. And this is the evidence of that. This is the rotten fruit of trying to think that we can succeed with all these different various strategies and troop levels when it was never going to happen. And it should have been self-evident at the time. But what I have argued actually for years now is that we should have withdrawn in a much more professional and coordinated and organized manner, not just say, OK, we've made the decision. This is what happened now. And then three months from now, we're, we're 95 percent complete. So nobody was coordinated. Nobody was ready. And now there's, just, there's a lot more chaos than there should have been. We have seen the U.S. spend a lot of money on training the Afghan government forces. As the Afghan opposition begins to unite against the Taliban, could that be crucial? Well, I, I wish it could. But the problem is, sure, we did lots of training and, and lots of you know individual coordination, et cetera, with everything from you know division level leaders all the way down to troopers. But the problem is we never required anything from the Afghan leaders in terms of you know, curtailing corruption. And we just let them go by with it. We just, you know, gave them tactical training, but we never had any standards that they had to meet. And so it just kind of perpetuated and they really didn't get a lot out of it. And again, you're seeing the fruit of that, those poor decisions. We're seeing the situation in Helmand. We're seeing the situation in Kandahar. These are very key areas. If they fall to the Taliban, Does that make it more inevitable that they will have large swathes of the country under their control and then move towards Kabul? I don't think you're going to see, uh, you know, something like you did in, I want to say it was 1997 or 98, where they actually had an army and marched on Kabul and, you know, had large artillery duels, et cetera. I don't think you'll see that because if they exist in large numbers, then they can be attacked a lot easier than they are. Their, Their strength has been that they can live and come in and out of the shadows. And they started doing in, in smaller areas outside the major cities. If they start taking in city fighting, number one, they're going to suffer a lot more casualties, and then you're going to see a stiffening of resistance. But what you could see, and is it very possible, is that they could you know, say, we're going to take some of these locations and then actually have a negotiated end. Because if they see that they can't, they're going to get bogged down themselves because they don't have a free path to this, then that could actually lead to a negotiated settlement overall. But it's not going to be easy for anybody, not the Taliban or the Afghan people. Not going to be easy at all. Daniel L. Davis there with his thoughts on that developing situation in Afghanistan.